Hi, this is Professor Charlie Evans, and as part of the Russian History 2 course this morning, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Putin Medvedev decade. And it is approximately a decade of Russian history. Putin became acting president when Yeltsin resigned in December of 1999. He was then legally elected as president. He served eight years. When his eight year term was up, two four year terms, um, his protege, his colleague Dmitry Medvedev became president. Uh, Putin became prime minister. And then after four years, uh, Medvedev became prime minister again. And Putin is back as Russian president. As everyone knows, uh, Putin comes from a secret police, a KGB background. That's not altogether unusual in Russian history. And Dropoff came from a KGB uh, secret police background. And what Andropov was able to do with that background was identify uh, key people who would be able to reform Russia. One of those key people eventually was Gorbachev. And with that secret police background, Andropov was, was able to understand that there were serious problems in Russia in the 1980s. And so he realized that Russia needed reform, and Gorbachev then attempted to uh, introduce and carry out a reform program. And so it's, it's not un, unlikely that when Putin became president, because of his access to uh, secret materials and information about the Russian economy, Russian society, and everything, that when he became president, he had the earmarks for a reform program, for a program that he thought would enable him to clear up the problems that ailed Russian, the Russian economy and Russian society. And by 2000, there were serious problems in Russia. The economy was a mess. Uh, the political structure had fragmented. Uh, and there was no clear uh, unity about uh, the future uh, of the Russian political process and everything. And so Gorbachev under undertook a reform program. And so it's one of the things as historians we've got to recognize that uh, it was a reform program. Even though uh, critics and scholars might not really agree on the, the kind of reforms that were undertaken, it was clear from in, in Putin's mind that these were reforms. And they were reforms undertaken to reestablish Russia as a great power. If Russia had slid and and kind of um, lost aspects of being great through the 1980s and then the collapse of the 1990s and everything, uh, Putin was there to reestablish Russia as a great nation. And that's really kind of the central tenet of the Putin Medvedev policies, policies that take place through the first decade of the uh, 2000s. Um, uh, let's just focus on three things. Uh, there was a clear transformation of the Russian economy. Uh, the Russian economy was stabilized. Uh, many of the key industries, such as Rosneft and Gazprom, were put in hands of the, the Russian state itself. Uh, so, in a way, you have a return to uh, the commanding heights, the, the, the state centralized control of the Soviet regime. Um, and that allow, did allow the Russian economy to uh, stabilize. Part of that was due to profits from oil sales abroad and everything. But there's no question that the Russian economy is in a much better position than it is today than it was uh, 25 years ago. You can also say the Russian government has stabilized. Um, whether you agree with that stability, whether you agree with the tinges of authoritarianism in uh, the Russian government, uh, whether you agree with the the foremost position of a single party, United Russia, in that government. Uh, whether you agree with the, the kind of strong presidential powers that Putin wields, um, by 2010, 2015, 2014, uh, compared to 1999, it's clear that uh, Putin and the government are in a far more stable structure than they were 20 years ago whether the structure is going to last, whether that stability will, will last, that's a completely different question and everything. That's not something we're really going to address here in the course. Now, the other aspect of, of making Russia a great again, making Russia a great power again, is a reshaping 
of the Russian cultural past and refocusing on the, the greatness of the Russian past, the greatness of Russian history, the great people that populate the pages of Russian history. And not only the cultural figures, um, the, histor the intellectual thinkers, the historical figures or whatever, but also the role played by the Russian Orthodox Church. There's been a revival of that role. There's been more prominence uh, to the Russian Orthodox Church as a key component of Russian culture and Russian history and everything. And so those three things, economy, politics, and the historical, religious, cultural heritage of Russia, are kind of like three real focal points of, of the policies enacted by Putin and Medvedev in the last decade. Now, the last thing I want to say is that as historians uh, studying something as close to us as the last 15 years is really difficult. On one hand, it's a lot easier to actually document what has happened, to document the events, to document the developments, to document the policies and everything. Um, that's really difficult if you're a historian of the 5th century or the 9th century, the origins of Russia. It's really hard to document exactly what happened. But as a historian of recent history, near history, that's not necessarily a difficult task. Uh, we can do that. What is really difficult is trying to assess uh, why the developments occurred, what's the lasting impact of, the, of those developments and events, what's important about them. It's really trying to understand the, the motivation and the reasoning for why history, history is playing out as it is. Because we don't have full access to the historical record, that's a really difficult danger of doing near history, contemporary history, and everything. And so, uh, I think that pretty much finishes it. Uh, Putin and Medvedev have now been the kind of powerful figures in Russia for, all right, 15 years, a decade and a half. Um, it's pretty clear that their ideology and their kind of, if you want to call it Putinism, their ism has, has crystallized in recent years. It's become... Uh, I don't want to say more formulaic, but it's easier to discern what the components of their ideas for Russia are than it was 15 years ago. And so as historians, we'll watch and see what happens and continue to examine what's happening in Russia now and in the next couple of years. Okay, thank you.